Hi folks, welcome to the another new video series part of uh, SKB data structure of the Linux kernel. As you can see, I am in the main uh, Linux kernel website which is the kernel.org and uh, you can see the various uh, releases which is like, uh, you know, uh, the uh, long term uh, uh, releases of various, uh, you know, kernel series and the current uh, stable series and the upcoming uh, mainline version actually. So you can uh, download the source code, and uh, we can we you can actually have this uh, this thing uh, source code in two ways. Uh, you can uh, uh, you can actually uh, view the source code. One is that you can actually download the source code. If you click, as you can see, you can just uh, download the source code. There is another way is uh, you can actually uh, browse it directly online. Actually, so you can you can say you can browse it. Uh, for example, I can type as SK buff. It's just a keyword and uh, using the Linux cross reference, you can directly browse it. So you can see you can uh, browse the directly the dynamic source across various uh, kernel releases. You can just choose uh, anything as such. Say for example 4.1, in this case it is showing directly the file in which the SK buff is defined. As you can see, it is open the file. It is in the uh, uh, source, which is in include uh, Linux SK buff dot h, and this is the location it is being situated. You can actually also go back and see the various files over here. You can either directly click over here, or else you can actually navigate through the URL. Actually. You can actually click over here, and it shows all the files located in this folder include Linux and say for example you click here and it is going to show all the files or folders which is in this location so we are in the current uh, parent directory which is the Linux and this is the parent directory and uh, in this you can go to include and uh, Linux and here you are going to get the file you can search it escape buff as you can see the skbuff.h and uh, so this is the definition of skbuff.h and uh, let me just close the search bar see uh, in this uh, they have uh, put various uh, important notes in comments and this will be very much important when you start coding and uh, you try to understand what is the specific uh, context of a uh, you know member variable in this struct actually so this guide is definitely going to be handy and you can uh, refer and anytime there are any changes uh, the kernel uh, team, uh, the people who kind of update the code, they are going to uh, change this, uh, the comment section actually in case if there is a change or any update in the, you know, the architecture of the SKB data structure actually. So let's just walk through the main data structure. You can. Uh, scroll down and uh, the main SKB data structure starts somewhere here. So even before the S uh, data structure is starting, the entire, uh, some of the main important member uh, variables in the data structure has been defined over here of each variable. As you can see here, instead of putting this help across the variable, they have actually defined before the declaration of the escape of data structure actually so you can see the struct over here and it starts from here and it ends all the way somewhere here yeah over here so you can see it is like somewhere around more than a hundred lines of code just the definition of the struct so you can see how important is the struct to learn when you want to do some sort of network uh, development in uh, Linux kernel as such. So once the data structure is ended over here, after that you can see uh, slowly it will start all the prototypes of the f uh, function parameters which is primarily to manage and uh, use this data structure effectively. Sometimes you need to use this uh, you know, wrapper APIs instead of directly using the data structure which is very much uh, safer uh, on the safer side 
result actually. So you can see right after this data structure is over, uh, you can see all the sorts of member APIs actually, I mean uh, function uh, access APIs actually. So you can see it starts here. I can show relatively where you are in this file. Here is my scroll bar where my mo mouse is pointing at actually. So you have, you can uh, almost uh, scroll all the way across till here actually. So you can see how large is this file actually it is. Let me just scroll and walk you through and uh, see in case if you want to, for example, here is an API which is very important actually. In case if you want to free this uh, <coughs> escape buff uh, instance, you can use k free SKP instead of directly, you know, uh, you know, uh, trying yourself doing something and uh, goofing up. You are supposed to call this k free SKP. Let's just, for example, uh, I can just uh, open it in new tab. Let's just see what the source code on this k free SKP. And uh, as you can see, it has prototype of this API uh, is defined in. Uh, include linux escape of which is nothing but this is the file and its uh, <coughs> source code is situated in you know the function source code is in net core escapee.c actually this is the file which corresponds to this escapee.h actually so let's just open this and uh, here is the source code uh, as you can see this api has you know a uh, sort of source code so that it can protectively access it and tries to you know free the memory allocation actually so in case if you are trying to do something manual and it will definitely lead to some sort of a problem instead you are supposed to use this <coughs> k-free skp api to do that uh, you know kind of in a safer way actually. so they have defined uh, they have uh, you know kind of wrote the source code here and uh, they have done an export symbol of k-free skp so that you can actually include this escapebuff.h in any of your sources uh, uh, you know source uh, network stack or any other uh, place in the linux kernel and you can just uh, use this uh, api as such the export symbol makes it possible so that you can use this api uh, externally as such so if you don't do this export symbol it will stay here in a kind of private access way actually you can't access it from outside this context actually so uh, this is one example <coughs> which is very very important since uh, any sort of skb once it is utilized or something you need to sort of drop a packet you can actually do a k-free skb and kind of reroute your uh, function you know uh, flow in the source code actually so let's just go back again so this is one important API and uh, 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 sometimes you need to understand this underscore underscore jargon it can be like some sort of intermediate uh, function uh, intermediate API which will uh, in turn make all this API or something like that actually so uh, let's just uh, discuss about this later and uh, let's just see some more APIs meant for accessing uh, and uh, manipulating this escape of See here again some of the important APIs is SKP clone, SKP copy and uh, as the name suggests it is to copy one SKB to another SKB so that you can have two uh, identical copies of SKB instances actually. And uh, so let's just scroll further down and uh, as you can see the uh, this thing is uh, still the file is we are not even just at 30 percent of this file i mean you can scroll even more further down as you can see there are so many apis just so many apis and there are many apis been added uh, from past uh, two to three years actually it is you can definitely see some sort of comparison between 2.6 kernel versus 3 dot kernel and uh, you know they, they just added so many apis actually based on the new features they added so scroll all the way down and uh, sometimes if uh, if the source of the API is very small and they will be defined in this header file itself as such sometimes if the source is uh, kind of relatively big and uh, if it is not a, a you know kind of uh, you know private uh, function something like this case then they will be defined in the .c file as such, something like this actually 
So here you can see the corresponding source code of each corresponding API. Most of the cases, the APIs which you call and use actually. So you can see the source code over here and its header file is here actually. In my next video series, I am going to cover some of the more other prominent and important APIs and uh, what each API does and uh, you know what to be done in before calling them and things like that actually. So let's just fully scroll this file and uh, just analyze it around uh, this particular uh, file of this particular version is somewhere around 3500 lines or uh, yeah as you can see it's around 3500 lines and you remove all the comments it is still quite a large file actually and so this is a very very important uh, data structure you should understand in terms of doing any sort of changes to the you know, existing Linux network stack as such. So that's that's all folks for this uh, part and uh, let's meet you on the upcoming part and in case if you have any queries and suggestions please mail me across or uh, you know uh, send your uh, uh, you know comments in uh, comments of